uh, session four, February 17th. All right, Megan, we're in. Um, I'm going to go through some hodgepodge leftover stuff first. Well, we still got meds, you know. Why don't we do meds first? And, and um, we're, uh, were we through with agenda meds? Yes, we've gone to brief meds, hadn't we? Nobody's agreeing with me. Uh, on page 16, uh, did we do just page 16? Uh huh. That's where we are, aren't we? Page 17. Starting the very top, page 17 in the briefs. And I'd love for us to get through, but I, we may not because I, I, I get tired of it. All right, by Durian. There's so many anti um, or, or drugs for um, diabetes, lowering blood sugar. And they're all out there. And if you don't believe me, just watch TV. They're all on TV. I bring up, well, I bring up kind of the hist historical ones. They're still out there. But they, these top two, by Durian and by Etta. By Etta, the second one up the top of 17, that was the breakthrough scientists out or uh, pharmacological science scientists pharma, pharmacology company scientists noticed that the um, hula monster uh, that looks like an iguana out in the desert wondered why they could eat and didn't have to eat again for um, weeks and months and we could say it about the bear the bear that hibernates as well but they happen to decide they check on the the hula monster and they found out that he, uh, the hula monster secretes a um, enzyme that um, makes digestion very very slow and so they said hark if humans had that they would eat and digest slowly and the production of insulin could keep up with the sugar. Because right now, M Mr. Diabetic 2 type, you're eating so much sugar, maybe it's not any more than you ever did, but your uh, beta cells aren't putting out enough insulin to take care of that massive amount of sugar. But if, if it digests slower, then we can keep the demand and the supply at the same. And it was a beautiful breakthrough. And by Etta was our first one. It's still out there, but not many use it now because you can read. It's administered sub-Q. Uh, it's a GI hormone used to slow eye. See, it, it doesn't do anything to the pancreas. It just slows GI absorption of food, thus decreasing the carbohydrate absorption or the blood sugar level. Isn't that great? What a breakthrough it was. It is an injection once, um, twice a day before you eat. And so they kept working with it and came out with Victura, uh, Victora, Vict go to B, uh, Victosa. I, I hadn't used it in so long. And again, it's lost some popularity. Go to page 21, Victosa. And I only am really putting them in here to show you the progress they made. Administered sub-Q once a day can be used in place of Bietta for glycemic control. So they came up with a once a day injection and that was a great thing. And now they're at, um, we'll look at Bidurian, once a week on top of 17. Administer sub-Q once a week, the extended form of Bietta. And then we've got several, Trusticity, uh, they're all kind. I didn't say it right, but the, uh, watch TV, be more mindful on ads on TV, and they'll tell you some of the new ones. But that's been the progress that they realized, type two, it's only for type two, where 
So, and I am going to, I might as well, oh, I, I want to tell it all at once. But I'm going to tell you this part because we are going to talk diabetes today. Um, it was described to me, and it can be described any, uh, you can about say anything about diabetes because it's such a mystery to us. And you don't believe it, be a diabetic and find it out. And in, in your daughter, Mandy, type one, and um, Mandy's told me a couple of things that I didn't know we'll get to. You were going to say something, Ann? No. No. Oh. Um, it was described to me, and it, he did a good job, and I, I kind of believe him. <laughs> he said, you and I that don't have diabetes, um, and this is mostly, again, type 2, because type 1, the pancreas just lets us down. I mean, it just, is she have any activity landing? No. The pancreas just quits on us. And uh, why? Well, what is, what have you been told the newest? I'll tell you what I've been told. Well, there's all kind of, they do. What I've heard, and it's changed because I've been a nurse 50 years, so I've heard several stories, and anybody else that has heard a theory, they don't know, let's get that straight. They don't know why the pain. But, now, this isn't data that is worth it. <laughs> right now, but I know three sets of um, twins, and and I know more sets than three, but three I know is one of them has diabetes, and 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 it was actually the all three have been type one, but um, there there's an idea that twins get a little short changed on their organs. It doesn't sound right, but I'll say it that way. Um, but virus, there's the theory that a virus attacks our, and this is number one, uh, type one, attacks the pancreas and um, kills the islets of Lungerham. The little islets are just killed antibodies um, um, so it's viral I, when I've talked to people I, I quiz them and it, these three sets of twins they were sick the one that has diabetes was sick and I wonder about your daughter Mandy sick with like the flu or something about two weeks before they came down with diabetes. You all had done that, can't remember probably. <laughs> yeah, but they did thinking, one of them's a physician who has it, so she's been very curious. And she knows she had the flu about two weeks before she got it. And, and again, your body's down. If you have the flu, your defenses are down, so it's real easy for a virus to get in and, and slaughter your islets. The islets, uh, the pancreas is a peculiar um, organ, so is it more sensitive to environment, to antibodies, to viruses? Uh, again, they don't know. And why do I say it's sensitive? Because it gets so upset if you overdo sugar, if you overdo um, um, fats, and it gets inflamed. It doesn't want to work so hard. It wants a nice level. And some of the organs, others don't quit working for us when we overuse them a little bit. Actually, most of our organs are so resilient and so uh, strong 
the liver, what the liver lives through with detoxing and all. And it doesn't quit on us. I mean, it can, but it takes a lot. So the pancreas is just, to me, a, an interesting organ. And obviously for everybody, because we can't come up with why. Why we get type 1? Why do they get blown out? the pancreas and no more insulin and then type 2 now what I was going to tell you the man told me on type 2 he says that I mean he's, he's a doctor of, of nurse practice and his specialty is diabetes he said the way I figure it a cell has four channels a cell four channels and sugar can get in any of those channels and that's you and me that don't have diabetes. We have that beautiful cell that sugar can slip in uh, with, the, with insulin, but we've got four channels for it to do in. And he said type two hereditary, he calls type two very much hereditary, and that's what a lot of people call it. He says the cell only has two channels. So, when sugar comes, it only can get in two instead of the four. And when you were growing, let's say you got type two. When you were growing up though, it didn't show that you just had a two channel cell because you were active. You were running, you were doing recess, you were, yes, you were consuming sugars, but you were burning them off as a child. It didn't hit till adolescence. And that's usually when type two happens and that's just when type when adolescence happens all our metabolism shifts just a little bit with hormones and so forth and that's when it shows up according to him that the body cannot keep up the sugar demand and, and in adolescence sometimes people do sports but sometimes they slow up in adolescence and I'm thinking of burning sugar into the muscle and so he says that um, in adolescence when all the hormones and everything's happening and you're still consuming I still drink X amount of coca-colas you know that it needs to be the absorption if we can slow up the absorption by Etta, by durian, Victosa then we can better keep um, a lot of sh and let those two channels work but not become resistant and that's your insulin resistant theory you ask a doctor to explain insulin resistance and they're having as hard a time as i am to tell you the point is it quits accepting and it's almost like the eyelid or the cells say you're putting too much on me i'm going to back off and it, you're insulin resistant that isn't a good explanation, but I defy you to find a better one. <laughs> because nobody can, they just, they love to say insulin resistant. I saw a doctor not long, about a month or two ago, and I said, tell me, just plain terms, tell me insulin resistant. Well, he couldn't. He tried, and that was fine, because as soon as he did it, I realized he's having as much trouble explaining <laughs> insulin resistant. But we just know those two chambers just have a hard time accepting and so that's kind of a resistant in itself it, it just can't keep up um, now we're going to talk more on diabetes but let's get back to page 17 in the uh-huh uh -huh. Uh-huh. 